Now I'd like to uh, give the floor to uh, President Yang Jiemin, uh, President of Shanghai Institute of International uh, Studies. I would like to talk about the continuities, changes of concepts, and uh, the diplomatic priorities and the practices, opportunities and the challenges uh, down the road. You know, in China, uh, we have the uh, one generation down to the another. So continuities are the main features of China's foreign policy. These include, among other things, independent and a peaceful foreign policy, role of peaceful development, win-win cooperation, five principles of peaceful coexistence, multipolarity, and moving toward a fairer and a more justified international system. However, today I would like to concentrate on the changes and uh, conceptual changes are very important for the new leadership to guide the coming decade of China's foreign relations with other countries. And uh, I'm very pleased to see Bob Zorik is here. He, uh, talk, he was talking about a stakeholder which created a lot of academic jobs in China and in the world to discuss about. Uh, and uh, now, uh, President Xi Jinping also uh, has made uh, some conceptual innovations. First of all, I think the new leadership is more on the global power standing to present our views, uh, what kind of the world it should be, it could be, and it should not be, and it could not be. Uh, in the past, China uh, was deemed as a regional power with global implications, but the Americans said us that China is a region, was a gen regional power with uh, global aspirations, whatever we will talk about. But after 2008, China was prematurely and unwillingly uh, be put into the limelight of the world arena, and now we have to think accordingly. And uh, we are creating and try to think uh, the so-called concept buildings. For instance, now the 18th Party Congress uh, called for holding high uh, the banner of peace development cooperation, that's Hu Jintao's. Now we put win-win. This win-win not on the economic trade investment, but uh, at, at the a higher level, that's overall level, that China wants to have a win-win cooperation with different systems, different kinds of countries. And also we are uh, define, redefining what the strategic opportunities are. And this time, uh, Mr. Xi emphasized more on the challenging side of the strategic opportunity. And Xi Jinping made a, a very important talk last year uh, on July the 7th at the Tsinghua University, but most of the media uh, ignored it, did not pay enough in attention. That is, uh, Mr. Xi Jinping made a much more clearer standing on defending China's core national interests. Uh, however, uh, uh, diplomatic relations and foreign relations, not only uh, the matters related to concepts, ideas, but more on the concrete matters. How do you deal with this? So the priorities and the practices are more important. The new leadership is attaching more strategic importance to neighboring countries. And I was told that uh, throughout this year, there will be uh, mutual visits uh, from China and to China. The top Chinese leaderships will visit 
and meet people uh, from almost every and each our neighboring country. And the new leadership is advocating for new type of major power relations. Uh, it's a little bit complicated uh, because the Chinese said that this new type of major power relations, then what is the old or traditional ones and what are the main contents in it? But the, our American friends said uh, they would like to have a new model of rising and established powers. So the, when you uh, read this catchphrase, you know what it means. So that's the cultural difference between the Chinese catchphrase and the American catchphrase. And the Chinese new leadership is showing readiness to tackle with hot spot issues. Uh, everybody here noticed that in recent weeks or months, uh, China is adopting a very much proactive policy on easing the tensions on the Korean Peninsula and uh, others. And uh, the new leadership is having both firmness and flexibilities in defending sovereignty and territorial integrity. On the one hand, China uh, made it clear our standings on the South China Sea uh, disputes. On the other, uh, China with a population of 1.3 plus billion uh, people uh, uh, had uh, recently just decided to launch a strategic partnership with a country uh, with only, uh, let's say, uh, 200 or 300,000 people, Brunei. Uh, so th this also shows that China's flexibilities are for uh, seeking for the cooperation, common the, uh, development in the disputed area in the South China Sea region. And uh, now what are the opportunities and the challenges? Opportunities are plenty. First of all, China will adhere to the role of peaceful development, which guarantees China on the continued rising curve economically, politically, and culturally. And uh, furthermore, the world will keep on the right track, I think, that's providing China with favorable environments. Uh, in the past almost 70 years, the world avoided having the massive and uh, uh, war like World War I, World War II. Uh, so uh, this gives us some confidence that we could avoid such uh, global uh, wide uh, wars, conflicts, uh, if the Soviet Union and the United States avoided head-on conflicts uh, because of the terrible uh, nuclear uh, di disasters, but now uh, we are on the more positive side. That is the, the increasingly close uh, the, the interdependence, not only in economic uh, affairs, but also in uh, the people-to-people, -people, cultural, academic, like this. The networking between China and the United States are the most uh, uh, one of the most in the world now, uh, with uh, its enhancing comprehensive national strength, including mature policy, China enjoys many advantages in dealing with international community. The Chinese leadership, the new leadership, has become even more self-confident. Uh, we say we are confident in the road we took, we are taking, and in the theories, we are under the disguidement and the, the systems that we adhere to and apply to other fields. And the challenges, of course, uh, China will meet more challenges in the second decade of the 21st century than the first one. Firstly, China needs to consolidate domestic basis under increasingly complicated and pluralistic situation. Consensus building and a synchronized domestic foreign policies are not easy jobs for the new leadership. The second is China faces a decade of maritime disputes, but there is no sign of effective solution. Therefore, China must try to prevent and manage the possible crises. 
Thirdly, China must show to the world the success of its policies concerning major power relations. Uh, China needs to develop its relations with the United States, fresh out its relations with Russia, and uh, advance our relations uh, with other BRICS states, streamline our relations with the Europeans, and uh, normalize our relations uh, with Japan, etc. And uh, finally, China needs to be more inclusive and uh, compatible with the entire international uh, community. Uh, material, physical interests, that's important, but we should not be confined by these, especially when China has become relatively better off, and we are looking for all round the developments of our relations of the international uh, community. Therefore, China faces a hard job of reforming international system conceptual convergence and uh, squaring off norms and uh, laws. Ladies and gentlemen, China is on the rise and China's rising path curve will be long and full of twists and uh, turns and I never believed that China could uh, overtake the United States within 10 or 20 years time. It's a long, long way to go but uh, I'm quite sure with the cooperation and the mutual support that uh, with the United States, with other major powers, with our neighboring countries and other members of the international community, China will emerge finally a real peace-loving, strong, prosperous countries. I think uh, on this, I would like to conclude. Thank you very much.